Good morning, sheep fams. Um, oh, fams? I don't say fams. <laughs> Good morning, sheep fams. Good morning, sheep fans. Cammy's the name, sheep's the game. Today, we have a variety of jobs to get through and helping me today is a new member of the team. He's going to be giving my hand throughout the winter, hopefully. Ideally, at least one day a week if he's available. He'll be a popular man though. He's dove into the world of being self-employed. It's Jock Welsh for the TV. <laughs> Some of you may have seen him in One Man and His Dog. Previous, previous winner, team uh, winner. Uh, is that right? I, I won my bit. Ah, oh, that's right, that's right. He won his bit. No digs, no digs. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so Jock's me giving us a hand through the winter. Obviously, a lot of sheep running now, and with a combination of that and other work that I'm committed to, it takes the pressure off a bit. Means we can get through more work in a day if I would get on and actually do some work rather than stand here talking to the camera. <laughs> We've got these sheep standing here just now. These are actually sheep lambs, bar the Jacob and the halfbred and the other shown one there. These are actually lambs that I bought last night and there's 54, there is 31 ewe lambs and 21 weathers and 2 AN other. So we're going to get them in, give them a Zolvix, obviously fantastic quarantine dose, you'll have seen the Zolvix vlog already, fantastic drench for the quarantine. Give them a Zolvix, a Heptivac and I'm going to crutch them out and then they're going to winter grazing and that'll be them should be all good for a little while till we'll be due a flip dose. Let's go on with it. We've had a lot of rain the last couple of days. My pens aren't looking in the best fettle. It's one of those jobs. I did scrape them out the other days you saw in one of the videos, but it's a never ending job when the weather's like this. And we're putting so many sheep through here as well. We've actually probably got the guts of 500 sheep to run through here today. All going well. Now we've done that, they're dozed and vaccinated. We're going to run them up the race and quickly crutch them. Just a crutch, round the crutch and either side of the tail, over the tail. Keeps them clean through the winter. If they were going to the top and you hadn't full shown them, that'd be another great option as well. Gives the top ease of access, which I think I've shown before in a previous video. These won't be going to the top, but keeps them clean. That is the first bit done. I've got a fair sweat on. It was only 54 that I crutched in the, the water. The sweat is running off my brew. So part of that is probably because I spent the, a couple of days at Archie's and drank a lot of beer and a lot of whiskey. I think I'm still feeling that a wee bit. I can feel a pain round about where my liver is. That's definitely part of it. So that's the first job done. Next job we are gonna, there's a couple of years to pull it here. We'll pull them out and then we will go and get the they're quite nicely marked lambs actually, not a bad pair of lambs. Orange heads are ewe lambs. No mark is uh, weather lambs. Nice pair of sheep. Bit of growing to do, but they're a nice pair of sheep. They'll come right as gimmers. Gonna go now, get this split up, put them to a pen out the road, and we're going to go and get the ewes in and deal with them. Uh, so with these sheep here, we've got a fair few actually packed in here, so we'll give you a look at them. It's amazing the difference when jokes here, I can actually fill this pen. So, we'll go through these ewes, I'm actually not just sure the exact count here, but essentially this wintering here, it's 200 ewes are wintered here. So I need to go through these and pick out 200 essentially to stay here. The first job we're going to do, is we're going to run everything through the first time, draw out any bad bags, 
or any issues with the sheep that mean they're not suitable for the tup this year and they'll essentially go as cull cows, they'll go to the market they'll be sold probably into the food chain unless anyone's looking for a pet with a bad bag watch out for them so there will be a few in here, I've seen a couple and I know there is a couple that have taken a notch out the year at lambing time and what I'll do, rather than me talk through the whole process, I thought even better let's get Vet Kaz involved and have him talk through it so here's Vet Kaz to explain to you what you're looking for with your sheep when you're going through them pre-tupping Good morning sheep fans, you join us here today on the Isle of Butte we're just going to do a really quick run through of what you should be looking for before you put your ewes to the tups how are we going to shed off the wheat from the chaff they've had a year, they've raised, reared some lambs and they might have picked up some wear and tear so three things you should look for are the three T's teeth so you'll make sure they've got sound teeth nice cooperative sheep you examine the teeth, make sure they're all there none missing, it's not broken mouth Mm -hmm. uh, as farmers would say, there's no overshot or undershot jaw uh, because she needs to eat enough grass or silage or cake or whatever we're feeding her to be able to rear her next crop of lambs. The next one is uh, toes, that's the next T. So you want to make sure A, she's not lame. If they've had more than one episode of lameness in a year, you should really be getting rid of them because those sorts of genetics will be filtering down into the flock. She's going to be shedding more bacteria. She's going to be more likely to go lame again the next year and cause you issues. The final T is tits. So this is the udder. So you want to have a quick feel. Uh, make sure there's no lumps or bumps. Make sure both teats are there. If she's had mastitis at lambing time or around lambing time, you should have marked her, hopefully, either with an ear notch or a red tag or something similar. Uh, because again, she's just going to cause issues next, the kind of next lambing and she's going to struggle to rear those lambs. Uh, and finally, uh, it's not a T, but body condition score, so just how fit they are. Again, we're looking here, we're looking at the top of the spine and the lateral processes uh, down here in the sort of lumbar region, that kind of loin, the chops really. And again, it's, you can feel a ridge on top, a ridge on the side, and just how prominent those ridges are tells you how fit or fat she is. Scoring them, uh, there's some great resources on QMS or AHDB and the targets are slightly different depending on if she's a hill ewe or a lowland ewe but you want her to be pretty much middle of the range so probably somewhere between two and a half and three and a half out of five and again you're feeling here, you're feeling the spine laid over there so you're feeling the top of the spinous processes and you're feeling the lateral processes out here so those are the ridges you can feel um, and again it depends how obvious those ridges are both on the top and the side shows you how lean or fit they are and really that's it you know we could and there's perhaps some treatments we could talk about as well but if you're looking at right what should i keep what needs to go to the mart or go as a cast you or a coal you needs to have good teeth good udder be sound and be in good condition and that's about it really so this one here is a good example to show you of what we're looking for when we check the mouth obviously kaz explained it a bit there earlier but one of the things we're looking for is the jaw being potentially undershot or overshot is very common uh, and what happens there is as you'll see in this one, in fact what I'll do is, to make, so I can talk over the top at the same time, I'll show you as I'm speaking. So with this sheep here you'll see that her jaw is overshot, so her teeth aren't making contact with the pad as they should be, the upper pad. Essentially what should happen is those teeth should make perfect flush connection with the upper pad and that's great for ripping grass, which is essential during the winter when the grass gets very short. With this sheep, because she's overshot the jaw, the teeth have grown up and went beyond the pad because obviously there's nothing to rub against there and what happens then is they get long, far too long, they start breaking of the ends and they get quite thin and spindly and essentially when she goes to pull grass now most of the grass will pull between her teeth and she'll be having to work really really hard to feed herself it's just, the right sheep like that are actually probably better without teeth than with what she has there just now so she'll be marked for going as well, winter's going to be too hard for her we'll just put her up the road so after a good bit of back and forth and changing plans and sorting things out we now have our batch of 200 sheep that we're going to keep here for the winter these are we've been through them all all good of the bag good of the mouth ready to do another year this is our ones here that we pulled out they're just wrong in the bags they've had issues at lambing time some of them may have prolapsed or whatever and i've taken a wee nick out their ear so out of the 200 we've picked out 12 out of 200 don't know if that's a good percentage or not, but that's what we have. I say it's 200, it's actually 200 and plus those, so it's about 240 or so that we went through. So that maybe helps helps the average a bit. We're going to run them through the foot bath here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split them in half, roughly. Put half into one field, half into another. And that way I just try and keep them spread out a bit, because I find if I overstock them, or overstock a field, I just have uh, sheep, sheep problems. <laughs> We've all got sheep problems. 
that's why I'm here. But we get feet problems, so I'm trying to keep them well spread out, and I find that really helps with the sore feet job. So if we can convince them to run through this foot bath to start with, usually they go. They're getting quite good at it now. It says, they're their weight. And they just work their way through that. They should all just run through, no bother. It's good. It's a good thing with repetition. The first couple of times is quite hard, but then the sheep get used to this. They're used to this setup. They've been to this farm. These ones have been here for about three years now, on and off. So they're getting quite used to the setup, and it makes everything a little bit easier when the sheep know where they're going. Split these, get them out, and then I'm going to go and get some lambs in. Although it is a lot of messing about and doing all these wee footy jobs, it's just the common thing that most farmers will be doing at this time of year. And I actually really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. As long as it's going well. You know, if I'd pulled out 50 bad bags, I wouldn't have enjoyed it. But when it's going well, it is good fun and the weather's good, which it is today. It's nice to see you. I've always said they're soaking. They never look as bright when they've had a soaking. But I still think they're looking quite good. You can let me know what you think. I'm getting met by counting these here. I know you're thinking, Cammy, you're some boy for counting sheep if you counted them there. I didn't really. I just... I was counting them in like fives because I was wanting about 70 and I think that's what we've got so put half here, half there, there's another batch across to make up to 200 across the road so we're all good, we're all good Great having joke here even just to run and do the things I used to do Back when I was a boy, used to be a young lad myself a few years ago Mine it well, mine it well, my knees still worked properly my shoulder didn't hurt if I raised it above my, my head Ah, oh, it was great times, great Great times. Next part of this very long and drawn out process, very complicated what I'm doing today. Even I don't know what we're really doing from one moment to the next. But now I'm going to pull out anything with a green back. <laughs> anything with a green back and the use of the red heads, they're going to go to some nearby fuggage, which is like silage aftermath, right fresh regrowth of grass. They're going to go into that. It's handy and nearby, so it's good because these lambs, some of these green back lambs that I've got here, they'll be ready to go. In fact, some of them are ready to go, but I just kind of need them for for wintering to keep the numbers up just now. So I'll run them on for a little bit yet. So we'll get them shed out down to this good grass, which you'll see in this video in a few seconds. Let's go. So this is another wee thing, probably quite common, probably more so in older setups, but you've got this a wee bit like this here in the box, I'm maybe not going to do this with, with one hand uh, Jock, could you hold that, thank you So this, it's been here as, as far as I can remember, I don't know if like my dad put this in when he was here or if it was here before he was here, but anyway, it's a handy wee thing when you can get it up Nightmare when you can't get it up The problem is this hasn't been touched since April or something. I might need to get a shovel into this thing man. Hammer would be great for a job. Really struggling it. Really struggling. There we go. We're away now. Hello. <laughs> What's that? There we go. I, uh, I'm just holding the camera here for Cammy. That's all he's really good for. <laughs> So this bit of grass here hasn't been grazed since around June, I believe. Yeah, June. This this bit was cleared and over there the fields behind are actually where my hay was made in the previous vlog. So these ewes and lambs will come onto here, get a fresh bite. And these are essentially like short keep lambs. These lambs should be ready. Some of them are ready to go just now, but what I'll do is I'll wait till we get our, enough to fill a trailer. It's a long road to Lanark from here, so we'll wait till we fill, get enough to fill the trailer and then we'll run them through. That's us finished today guys. Thanks very much for watching this one. A lot going on. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing and I tried to explain what I was doing as I went. We're right into winter now. Sheep are getting fluke dozed, mineral dozed, various things, whatever we're up to, as you saw in this video. I'll always try and explain it as best I can, but feel free to ask some questions in the comments of anything that I might have missed out or wasn't explained very clearly. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you've clicked the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. And if you got this far, fair play to you, you must really like sheep. Good morning, sheep fans. <laughs> Once you get that out, you'll be cruising. Good morning, sheep fans. Um, my fans? I did. I did say fans. It's nerve-wracking, isn't it?
nervous. It's just worse than finals. It's like big bloody microphones. Anyway, good morning, Sheep fans. You join us today on the Isle of Butte. 